Dan Campbell, classic, goes for it on fourth down every time, but at some point you have to know you got to take the points. You do, and there's this whole narrative like, oh, okay, we're going to be aggressive, we're going to yeah. be aggressive. So you have the best team, let me just paint the scenario here. You have the best team probably on paper in the NFL you're playing against at their own home. You've completely dominated them, like I'm saying. You sit there, they come out at the half, they get the ball. You get a stop and hold them to a field goal. You then respond and have a field goal. That is so demoralizing in itself. That is aggressive. Right. There is nothing cowardly about going up 17 points. That's not cowardly. If I'm on the team, if I'm on the team and we respond to, they just came out, scored three points, and we respond with, we just came down, drove, and matched your three points, and now you're still down 17, I'm coming off the field, shaking hands yeah. like, that's how it is, boys. That we answer everything they do. We answer everything they do. This is our game. But instead, what the Lions did is basically take, like, think of a, a pool full of sharks, okay? And instead of just like, hey, the sharks are just swimming around, they took two huge buckets of chum <laughs> and did a cannonball with them attached and maybe some weights at their ankles. Yeah. I mean, it's the San Francisco 49ers, and this is what you decide to do? Okay, and then you come out, and I feel bad because Gibbs has been phenomenal. He's been great. But the fumble is tough. And then you come back and do it again. And let me tell you something that my dad told me, Jay. And his dad told him, and it's something that I live by. Two wrongs don't make a right. Yep. Clearly, someone never told Dan Campbell that. Okay, you got burned. You, you tie the game there. Right we're, there? We're, we've now moved on to what I thought was the craziest fourth down attempt of all time. <laughs> to the second craziest. When you're down three, you've got a good kicker. Yeah. Kid's been dynamite. I thought he was going to go for it at the end of the first half instead of going up by 17 which, points. Again, right? now that you see it all, how does he decide, which I would have kicked all three. I want to be very clear. Yeah. But how does he decide to go for it in the second, second half? half. <laughs> and, and it's tough because I want to be very clear here. Dan Campbell has turned the program around, oh, yeah. turned the organization around, and, and there, he deserves so much credit. I think he's potentially going to get coach of the year. Yep. So I, I want to be very clear with that. But this to me, in, in my era, you know, I'm 34 years old. The worst playoff call ever I was on the field for. Yeah. That was an interception on the goal line with Marshawn Lynch. Yep. That was a tough day for tough me. Tough day for you, for I sure. I would say that these two calls are in the conversation for the second and third worst calls wow. in the last, again, since I can remember, let's call it last 25 years. Wow. And, and to – qualify that a little bit it's just simply that had they just kicked the field goal in both situations right yes and again <laughs> you're, it, you're in great shape great, great shape. shape yeah and, and where my head goes again you think of the and I know we're going to talk about the the other game soon you think about how surgical some teams can be I talk about the Chiefs and we'll get to that but you look at the Lions their offensive coordinator Ben Johnson was dominating destroying yeah. the defensive coordinator Steve Wilkes the Lions offense in general, their offensive line was mauling, mauling this defensive line. Mm -hmm. They rushed for, a, oh, I think, 140-something yards in the first half. This is not a slouch defense. Nope. The, the 49ers defense is very, very talented. I've played against these guys. They're ferocious. And it's like you've got everything you want. And you've got a chance to just keep your foot on the gas, but instead you risk it. I'm trying, I mean, I made the shark comparison. It's almost like for anyone who goes to a casino, imagine you won a bunch of money and you say, I got an idea. Take it back. Yeah. Have it back because I want to keep gambling. <laughs> Not even like gambling the money you have. Yeah, just yeah. like you can take this even though I just won it off you. Yeah. I don't even know what to say. I'm at a loss. Yeah, it's a, it's, and it, it's so tough for my hometown. It's Jay. devastating for your hometown. And the Niners offense looked a lot different in the second half, oh. obviously. Um, so that's the other, you know, Thing. They scored the points. They yes. marched down the field, unlike the first half. What do you chalk up that difference to in the second half? I think momentum was part of it. Yeah. You know, and, and next thing, beyond the decision to go for it, yeah. what you look at Brock Purdy, and there's a lot of critics out there. There's a lot of critics in this building about Brock Purdy. Yeah. Wrongfully so, I might add. I mean, the guy turned into Lamar Jackson in the fourth quarter. He did. But what I would say is that Lamar, I mean, Lamar, Brock likes to play with a lead, or when it's at least a one-score game where he has a run game available to him. Right. So not only did the non-field goal attempts slash fourth down misses cause, you know, a point discrepancy, but it really put Brock, in my opinion, 
back into his comfort zone. It yeah. put Kyle Shanahan in his play calling back into his comfort zone because instead of being down 17 where the thought is we can't stop this team because of the long bomb to Ayuk, which we've seen, you're now down seven and you've got the whole arsenal of plays at your disposal. And now all of a sudden, a Lions secondary, which was not very good all year. You talked about it. Really, their Achilles heel. Achilles heel is vulnerable. It was the whole bend, don't break. Well, it broke. Yeah. And when they needed it, Brock Purdy dominated. Yeah. I don't care what anybody says. You know, you can chalk up stats to this, stats that. Oh, Brock Purdy's going to be the weak link. Blah, 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 blah. In the fourth quarter, when they're down... 14, should have been 17. I'm going to keep harping on that, almost like I do with my kickers. Brock Purdy made a tremendous amount of plays, and yeah. you've got to tip your cap to him. You saw him at the very end. You know, the way he celebrated, it was like he knew it was almost over, and he snatched that victory away for the Lions. And now if you're a Lions fan, you think about it all offseason, you think about those fourth down calls. I just, I'm watching the game, and I'm sitting here thinking to myself, Jay, not only are the Lions going to blow this team out, they're going to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> right. And I'm right. pinching myself because I'm like, holy smokes, the Detroit Lions are that good. Yeah. They just walked in to Santa Clara and smacked the Niners to go to the Super Bowl. And you oh, just, man. you gave it back to them. It's the most hard. I, as you know, I love to poke fun at the Lions yep. and the Lions fans. Well, but. They've deserved it over the years, but this is their this is their time to erase all of that, right? And instead, you leave you head into the off season with uncertainty, right? Yeah. Because now you're like, we're we gonna keep going with Campbell continuing to make these choices. That's a, like that's right? a, an honest question, right? And again, obviously, the guys, potentially the coach of the year, but at master some point, motivator. Everyone yes. loves playing for him. Nobody's questioning that, but. At some point, the fourth down calls had to catch up with them, and it's just unfortunate that it happened in the NFC Championship game. Very unfortunate. Very yeah. unfortunate because in what's tough, too, and I'm not saying they can't win the division. You talk about an offseason of uncertainty. Yeah. But if you look at their division next year, in my opinion, it will be the toughest division in the NFC and arguably the toughest divi division in the NFL, depending on how free agency works out. Right. But the Packers certainly look good. Obviously, the Lions are a great, great football team. There were a lot of people at the beginning of the year that were wrong about them, myself included. Yep. But I think that the Vikings, if they stay healthy, depending on who's playing quarterback That's with their right. coaching staff, is also very stout. And the Bears are... They got two picks of the top, top ten here. And they <laughs> look pretty good to finish the year. They did. They did. So, again, I'm not trying to make it even worse for Lions fans, but it's not like next year is going to be a cakewalk. No. And you've got a huge target on your back. Yeah. I want to cry for the Lions fans, but deep down I also want to laugh because it's hilarious. It's uh it's just kind of the way it's gone for that franchise through their entire existence.